in this session we will try to develop relationship between spot exchange rate foreign exchange rate and interest rates by covered interest arbitrage means covered or protection in the event of a change in the exchange rates because of a forward contract for example uh, we have market info on us and swiss currencies and that says that spot exchange rate uh, between swiss and us currency is equal to 2 swiss franc and we have 360 days forward rate and that is 1.90 swiss franc against 1 dollar a nominal interest a nominal risk free interest rate in us is equal to 10% whereas in switzerland it is 5% now assuming 1 dollar we have and we need to invest this 1 dollar in to some riskless investment so would there be any arbitrage opportunity we have an option that is option 1 where we can invest uh, this 1 dollar in riskless us investment uh, say 360 day t bills and at 10% risk less interest rate if this 1 dollar is grown over a period of 1 year then at the end of year 1 it comes to 1.10 us dollar now as a second alternative we have uh, an arbitrage opportunity and let's see how this arbitrage process work uh, we need to take the uh, certain number of steps like at first we need to convert 1 us dollar into swiss franc at the rate of 2 and in this way we will be getting two swiss francs then we will at the same time we will be getting a forward contract of 360 days uh, which is 1.90 swiss franc we are entering into this forward contract because we need to convert Uh, our swiss franc into us dollar at the end of the period then at the uh, third step we need to invest the two swiss francs in switzerland in risk less investments uh, let's see uh, if we put this two swiss franc into risk less uh, risk less investment at the risk free interest rate of 5% then this 2 swiss franc will be uh, grown to the amount of 2.10 swiss franc now we need to convert this swiss franc of 2.10 into a uh, dollar at the forward contract rate of 1.90 so we will be getting 1.1053 us dollars so in this way we see that there is a uh, difference of a uh, 0.03 and their difference is be, uh, higher than the return we have earned in us risk less investment so we can conclude that if we have two risk less investments then there exists some opportunity for the arbitrage transaction now let talk about interest rate parity assuming no covered interest arbitrage opportunities in existence then there must be in existence some relationship between spot exchange rate forward exchange rate and relative interest rates now to see let equate our earlier two options option 1 and option 2 to prevent any arbitrage opportunity so we have an equation the left hand side of that equation is the 1 plus r us and that is the interest rate of us which is equal to 
the spot exchange rate multiplied by the relationship between interest rate of a foreign country and the forward exchange rate we can also equate uh, replace this equation for t time period in order to determine the effect over a certain period of time as per interest rate parity the percentage forward premium or discount is approximately equal to the interest rate differences which we can see through in the equation on the left hand side the equation is showing the forward premium or forward discount whereas on the right hand side the equation is showing the difference in the inflation rate of two countries like a domestic country and a foreign country as per interest rate parity interest rate differential of any two country can offset the changes in the relative value of the currencies this means that in this way the opportunities for arbitrage transactions can be eliminated to understand this let's take an example we have a spot exchange rate between japanese yen and us dollar equal to 120 20 japanese yen whereas interest rate in us is equal to 10% and in Jap uh, japan it is equal to 5% so in the presence of this data what would be the forward rate to prevent the covered interest arbitrage now if we put this data into the equation of uh, that we have earlier seen uh, where we equate the model 1 option 1 with option 2 and putting the values into this equation we come to the value of 114 japanese yen and at this forward exchange rate the possibilities of arbitrage opportunities is eliminated now how we can develop the relationship between forward exchange rates and future spot rates uh we see that the uh, there is a condition that is called as unbiased forward rate conditions and ignoring the risk this condition uh, should hold well this means that the consistent decline in the forward rate than the future spot rate and in that case anyone wanting currency in future would consistently uh, get more unit of that currency but not agreeing or entering into the forward exchange and if this is the situation then the forward rate will be increased to get anyone interested in the forward exchange rate and same is true for the opposite of the this condition for these two reasons we can see that the forward and actual spot rates should be equal to each other on average let's see the implications of relationship between purchasing power parity interest rate parity and the ufrr unbiased forward rate at first we develop the relationship between uncovered interest rate parity uh, for that purpose we need to put international financial market relationship in one place that we have developed earlier means we have the equations for purchasing power parity uh, interest rate parity and unbiased forward rate and if we combine the unbiased forward rate and interest rate parity we see that the unbiased interest parity uh, is equal to and this is basically that the expected spot exchange rate uh, after one period is equal to the spot exchange rate as grown by the differential of interest rates between the two countries now let talk about international fisher effect to that purpose we now compare purchasing power parity and the uip 
we have the equations of the two sides and we see that both of the equations have expected spot exchange rate on their left side and their right sides then must be equal to each other if we equalize their right side to each other we see that the difference between the inflation rate is equal to the difference between the interest rate of the two countries so if uh, this mean if we try to rearrange this equation we see that the real rates are basically equal across the countries